Guys, don't sleep on the Sony FX30. People are passing up this camera because it's not full frame and totally disregarding that it's actually incredible. If you're new to the cinema camera world, the FX30 is the perfect entry. I've been using it extensively since I got it and my a7S III is starting to collect dust. Now don't get me wrong, the a7S III is amazing and I'm not denying that, but the FX30 is half the price and can easily keep up. This is why I'm considering selling my a7S III and buying another FX30. Oh, my name is Jonah August, I'm a wedding filmmaker based in Canada and I'm happy that you're here. So I want to go right into a full review of this camera. Yes, it's quite similar to the FX3, but it does have some features that the FX3 does not possess. First, let's start off talking about the compact form of the FX30's body. This camera is tiny, especially considering it's a cinema camera. We usually imagine cinema cameras being these huge setups completely rigged out. And yes, you can do that with this camera, but at its bare bones, it's extremely small. I find this to be a pro because in my line of work, having a lighter setup is actually more beneficial. As a wedding cinematographer, it's nice to skip out on wrist pain. This camera weighs only one pound, 3.8 ounces. Like the FX3, the FX30 is weather sealed. It's really important for me to have a camera that is weather sealed. I live on the west coast of Canada and it rains a lot here. Now I can film outside in many different conditions and I don't have to worry about this camera. I suggest not to be careless with it though, but for the most part, it should have no issues. There are a bunch of custom function buttons littered all around this camera body. This is super important for filmmaking. You can set all your necessary tools to the custom buttons. The FX30 pretty much gives you the ability to set any button to whatever setting you like. Have you ever found yourself filming and everything's going gray, looking amazing, and then once you're done your shot, you realize that you weren't filming at all? Well, fortunately, this body has tally lights all around the camera so that you know that you are recording for sure. You can also set the screen to highlight red around the border so that you know you're recording at all times. I love that this camera has a full-size HDMI, even though it's a tiny, inexpensive cinema camera. This is more sturdy than a micro HDMI, and if you bump your cord, you don't have to worry as much that it breaks off within your camera. The swivel screen is great for filming at different angles and for blogging. Not only that, but the quality of the screen is a huge upgrade from the FX3. The screen boasts 2.36 million dots in comparison to the FX3's 1.44 million dots. I really like the menu system that Sony has come out with on all their new cameras. It's laid out well and is really easy to navigate and they have this new swipe up feature to access your main settings quickly. The five axis in-body image stabilization of this camera is pretty decent. It's not incredible by any means, but it does do a good job. I previously shot on Panasonic and they are the kings in regards to IBIS such smooth footage. I initially felt like this was a setback moving to Sony's IBIS, but it's just because I was so privileged with Panasonic's. My preferred way of filming is with active stabilization turned on. Yes, it crops in a little bit, but it helps smooth out my footage when shooting handheld. You can record for quite a long time with the FX30. It gets an extra 30 minutes in comparison to the FX3. Under the right conditions, you can record up to 175 minutes on one single battery. Biggest gripe that people have with the FX30 is its APS-C sensor. I understand people's complaints, totally understandable, but once you see the image that comes out of this camera, I don't think you'll really care about its smaller sensor anymore. For filming, it has approximately 20.1 effective megapixels, and for taking photos, it has 26 effective megapixels. Sony did not hold back with its dual card slots. It can take two SD cards or two CF Express Type A cards. Unlike the FX3, you can purchase the FX30 with or without the XLR top handle. I really like the versatility of this handle. It's quite incredible. I don't want to go deep into talking about it. It could take quite a while, but I think it's a great addition to your FX30. The FX30 can record up to 4K, 422, 10-bit, 120 frames per second. This is quite remarkable for a camera price so low. Also, the amazing thing about this is that the 4K image from the FX30 oversamples from a 6K image, which means that it actually provides more detail than the FX3 and the A7S3. My favorite profile to shoot on on the FX30 30 is S-Log3. This is the most flexible profile you'll get with this camera and it gives you the ability to manipulate the image. I film all of my weddings with this profile and there isn't much I'm not able to do with it. Another popular profile on this camera is S-Cinetone. This is Sony's cinematic profile and it doesn't need much tweaking. 
It's great for fast turnarounds when you don't really want to worry much about color grading. If you want to get the most dynamic range possible, you have to film an S-Log3. The FX30 has 14 plus stops of dynamic range, slightly worse than the FX3, but this is still quite good. It does a really good job at recovering the highlights and a pretty decent job with the shadows as well. Now the autofocus is absolutely immaculate. It nails it every time. I really never have to worry about missing focus. Don't really have much to say about it, except it's amazing. Now an upgrade from the FX3, this camera has focus mapping. This feature is really cool and helps you nail focus, especially when you're focusing manually. The colored part of the image shows what's out of focus and the other part is what's in focus. When pulling and racking focus, this camera has lens breathing compensation. This feature definitely elevates the quality of your shot. This camera will probably never overheat on you as long as you set the auto power off temp to high. For my line in work, filming ceremonies and speeches that can go on for a long time over an hour sometimes and i never have to worry about this camera overheating on me having this built-in fan makes a huge difference i recently made a video testing the sony catalyst brow stabilization the fx30 records gyro data so that you can stabilize this footage perfectly in post it is a bit time consuming, but it's a sweet option to have. This camera has dual base ISO at 800 and 2500 when filming in S-Log3, and an S-Cinetone, it's 125 and 400. Sure, this camera does not compare at all to the FX3 or A7S3. Those cameras are absolutely phenomenal in low light, but it's still great to have that second dual base at 2500. I went out and did an early morning low light test with this camera at 2500 ISO, and the image was quite clean. Lastly, this camera is dirt cheap. It's an absolute steal. 1800 US dollars and you get all these specs jam packed into this camera. This is an absolute steal. I'm actually quite tempted to sell my A7S III and get another FX3 and the lens. I could actually confidently film weddings with just the FX30. If I had a three FX30 camera setup, it would do really well. I think we're really privileged with tech these days such a low cost, we're getting incredible quality. Now there are a few things about this camera I didn't get to. If there's anything specific you wanna know, let me know in the comment section below. This video is just a general overview of the main specifications of the Sony FX30. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about it, if you own one already or if you're gonna pick one up. Thanks so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. Don't forget to turn your notifications on and I'll see you in the next video.